cloud converged infrastructure, hyperscale, hyperconverged, software defined. The IT world is abuzz with buzzwords. At the center of it all is EMC and VCE. VCE once a company that was owned by a collection of Cisco, VMware, EMC, a little bit of Intel with a separate governing board has now been rolled in to EMC and this is really the first big VCE announcement that we're going to analyze subsequent to that um, bringing back VCE internally to EMC. I'm here with Stu Miniman here at Wikibon headquarters. Stu, big announcement from VCE today, uh, taking off the gloves a little bit or maybe I should say the handcuffs. Yeah, so, so Dave, it's interesting. You know, we've watched VCE since the start. You know, disclaimer, I actually worked on some of the architecture uh, when it was a project inside of EMC back in the early days. Uh, you, you know, it's interesting. There's so many out there in the press that love to, you know, pick on VCE. Every time Cisco did something with one of the storage partners out there, it's, up. Oh, VCE's dead. You know, anything in the ripple as to how the relationships work, up. Oh, you know, VCE's going to be dead. Um, you know, VCE's grown. You were just at the uh, EMC analyst event down in New York City this week, uh, and I think the the number you gave me is for seven quarters, they've grown 50% year over year. I mean, phenomenal growth. Uh, number we hear is, you know, in, in the ballpark of $2 billion that VCE did. Uh, and so, you know, what some of the data that we got from, from the people involved is, of course, when a company has grown that big, everybody wants to be a part of you. Everybody's like, hey, I've got a software product, I've got a hardware product, how do I get on board this train? Because it's huge. Um, and some of those pressures from the parent companies were starting to, you know, cause some tension and cause some problems, and it, it just made sense since EMC was the majority owner that it really just comes back into EMC. Cisco, by the way, still you know a minority owner, but there's no board anymore. It's just a division of EMC, still keeping the brand, still keeping VCE, and uh, you know we're starting to see a you know some changes along the way, but it's core mission to still simplify IT um, and you know drive that convergence, and you know they're one of the leaders in this space. And that train that you talked about, that's a single skew train, it's not a reference architecture, they've made a big deal about that, and I used to joke, you know, any color you want as long as it's black, uh, but there's some different shades now that they're offering. So talk, take us through the announcement. Yeah, sure, Dave. So uh, first of all, you, you're right. When we think back to the early days, one of the knocks on V-Blocks was, uh, you know, really it's, it's a single configuration and I can't adjust and I can't modify and, you know, customers need options. But what we know is customers spend way too much time trying to like over-optimize and configure it and turn those knobs and the simplicity of VCE so that, you know, it is truly that single SKU that ships out of the manufacturing and you know exactly what you get, you know how it's going to perform with certain workloads, that was great. And over time, they've added more models, they've added more configurations, and the announcement today, uh, a couple of big things that are going to allow even more flexibility, but still keeping what they call the VCE experience. So. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is what are called the VX block, which is a, a little bit of it, it forks what a V block was. A V block we always knew was it's EMC storage, Cisco compute, Cisco networking. Uh, a, a VX block actually is going to allow me to change some of those components a little bit. Uh, so uh, they talked down the road that both the compute and the networking, maybe even the virtualization, uh, could change off of the original uh, configuration. The first configuration that they're going to have is that you can run uh, VMware NSX, which of course is the uh, you know software networking component or SDN component, the, the huge NYSERA $1.2 billion acquisition, uh, NSX on what basically is a V-block, because even though it's going to be called a VX block, the hardware hardware configuration is really the same as what I had with uh, a vBlock before, but it's just going to give that option for VMware's uh, you know, software network. So that's an example of something that probably wouldn't have happened, right, as a, 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 a previous administrations. If, v, if Cisco has a vote on the board, wouldn't they have vetoed something like that? Um, so there was definitely some tension there, and uh, th there was discussion that, you know, hey, if I'm still using Cisco hardware gear, yeah, I can do VMware networking, I can do other software on top of that. I mean, there are places where Cisco and EMC and VMware, you know, compete a little bit when it comes to the software component. So if the core components stay the same, it might have happened on VCE. It just happens a lot faster and a lot easier now that VCE is, uh, you know, part of, uh, you know, re really just under the EMC umbrella. Well, what about Cisco's software-defined ACI? 
AI. I, uh, I presume that's still at play. I mean, some customers are going to want to use that. Yeah, a absolutely. And ACI is being baked into the V block. That that is a configuration that you can get. And uh, you know, if, if Cisco's smart, they're going to leverage VCE to be the driver, really the tip of the spear, to get those customers to adopt it. Because um, you know, V block customers tend to be pushing the envelope a little bit, trying those newer technologies. So you know, ACI is a perfect fit uh, for the V block. Well, Cisco. I mean, really, th that that relationship worked out in the sense that it created a distribution channel for Cisco. You had EMC Salesforce, who's got relationships with a lot of big customers. Like you said, it's the big customers who are buying V-Block. So, I mean, it worked out pretty well, uh, but you always hear about these tensions. I mean, what's going on there? What yeah, the so, so, so first of all, of course, Dave, Cisco wants anybody to sell their gear, sell sure. more of their gear, um, and absolutely, when it comes to the UCS, the compute platform, if it wasn't for really the two I'd call out, it's EMC and NetApp did a great job of getting those to the customer's environment, because even even though it's the server piece, the storage guys, you know, have had a long time interconnecting how those pieces work. Uh, so, you know, VCE with the V block and the NetApp FlexPod both delivered a, a ton of those environments. If you look at the bigger UCS customers, most of them are buying Converge. Uh, a lot of revenue that, that that drove Cisco made it easier for customers to adopt that change. Uh, because one thing that Convergence does, and even Hyperconvergence takes it even further, is I don't think as much about the brand, I think about the solution. And if I think about the solution, I can make that change if you know, I've been in HP or an IBM shop for ages, well, I'm also a Cisco customer and I buy the solution, it makes sense, I don't worry about, oh wait, you know, the compute has so-and-so's so logo on it. Well, what about hyper-converged? Um, we talk all the time, you saw um, a big raise the other day by SimpliVity, um, you know, Nutanix is doing well. Uh, granted, it's a, at the lower end of the market space, maybe than what V blocks traditionally have played, but but those those markets always come together. What about hyperconverged? What's VCE's hyperconverged strategy? Yeah, so so today, Dave, VCE does not play in hyperconverged. EMC does. EMC has the VSpecs Blue, which is based on the uh, you know VMware vSAN Evo Rail mm -hmm. uh, technology. Uh, I would expect that VCE needs to move in this space. Cisco is going to move into the space. Cisco actually is a vSAN partner. They don't do the Evo Rail. Um, so today, nothing uh, from, from VCE, but expect to see more. Uh, you know, VSpecs is already there. Uh, but by the way, VSpecs uh, and the solutions organization in EMC all report now to Praveen, who's the CEO of VCE. So absolutely, I expect to see and hear more from VCE on hyperconvergence. But today, I mean, Dave, we talked about if VCE is doing two billion and convergence is like a $6 billion market, hyperconverged last year was about a tenth of that. Yeah, so okay. it, it's still early, it's still growing, it's, it's the future. So, you, so in, in just keying on what you just said, Pat Gelsinger at the financial analyst meeting this week talked about Evo Rack, and he said that the first configuration is going to be a solution around VCE or VBlock. Um, so that's going, you know, that Evo Rail is going going up market. Okay, um, what about? Uh, Vscale, where does Vscale fit in? So what exactly actually, is just one more piece, talk about the flexibility of the solution. The other one is if you look at a converged environment or especially a hyperconverged, one of the things that people have questioned is, what if I you know, need more computer, I need more storage, can I be flexible? Um, and uh, VCE now has uh, a, a solution that they're calling a VCE technology extension, so now I can take a block of compute or a block of storage and plug that into the network. Um, so it, it's great if I just need more you know, Cisco UCS or if I wanted, say, from EMC and Isilon or Extreme IO, to programmatically plug that in, still keep it in the V block experience, and that leads to your question, which well, is uh, yeah, but so yeah, that, but yeah. So I just want to uh, second that. I mean, that's a criticism you have of a lot of the the hi hyperconverged solutions is that you can't scale storage independent of compute. Um, you you actually hear a lot of people in the Hadoop community complaining about that, and you know. <laughs> Why not? I mean, different workloads are going to require different profiles. Yeah, and, and absolutely on that, and that's why a single solution isn't what you need. You need flexibility. So take Nutanix, for example. It's not a single option. They have kind of you know, a small remote office box. They have a big storage heavy box, and if I put them all in a pool together, I can have different configurations and balance as needed and grow as needed. So, oh, so that's their angle. Yeah, that, that, that's know, Nutanix yeah, okay. angle and uh, you know, SimpliVity. Um, you know, they're, they're, it's not like you've got one monolithic box. 
box and there's not a little bit of adjustment inside there, but absolutely there there are t you know environments where you might run out of computer, might run out of storage. But there's greater and, granularity yeah. than the marketing would lead you to believe is what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, it, 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 there, there's some nuance there, absolutely. Uh, okay, what about vScale? Okay, so, so uh, e VCE, um, when they first came out, it was, well, you're just taking the parent company's technology. Are you going to create anything yourself? And the first thing that they created is what they call VCE Vision, which is really their orchestration software layer. And vScale is really this, the, the next generation, kind of, kind of what the, this whole announcement from VCE was called, uh, the dot .next uh, release. Uh, reminds me a lot of how VMware uh, you know, does their announcements, but um, uh, it, it's, it's taking vision and really turning vScale into a software backplane that can pull together you know, the V blocks and the VX blocks and the compute and storage and, and manage all of them in a really software defined way. Um, and it really plays in nicely with, if you look at what EMC has with Viper, what Cisco has with ACI, it's a similar type of orchestration model and could leverage all of those things uh, going forward. Okay, so it's another layer on top of the fabric. Um, and it's, and it, uh, Vision was, is a VCE product, right? I mean, they, they sort of built that themselves. Yes, a homegrown which was, software. Which was the first product that they actually cr created IP on their own, right? right. I mean, you, normally it was taking some VMware, some Cisco, some EMC. Um, so where do you see that, that product going? Um, so, so vScale, uh, you know, customers of VCE don't just buy one box, that they're usually buying a lot, um, a lot of repeat, a lot of larger customers, uh, going into service providers, uh, going into large enterprises, and when I want to manage uh, these, these large clusters in these environments, uh, this is where vScale is going to be able to t take care of that, um, and you know, it, it, it's a good extension for the product line. So Stu, I want to talk about Cloud in the Box. When, when these systems came out, and it was interesting, um, Larry Ellison actually made the statement um, that he, he, they, Oracle didn't get it all started, VCE didn't get it all started, it was actually Teradata that it got all started, the first to actually put you know, sort of this appliance model together and all the compute storage and, and other infrastructure in the box, and so that was many, many, that was back in the 80s. But it was really Exadata and, and, and VCE and sort of HP has sort of chimed in with converged infrastructure right around that 2009 time frame. But when, it, when that occurred, everybody started talking about cloud in a box. And it really wasn't cloud in a box, it was compute networking and storage in a box. And then you had this management and orchestration thing. Where are we with cloud in the box? Yeah, yeah, great question, Dave. You know, I think back a few years ago, it was really you know advanced virtualization in a box, and maybe with some management on top of it. Um, and we, we've come a lot further. So if you look at EMC's hybrid cloud it uses converged infrastructure as the substrate. It's the base layer, and then there's a lot of software on top of it to really turn that into a cloud offering. So EMC Hybrid Cloud is specifically, it's either vBlock or vSpecs underneath it, and therefore I know if I have a certain number of virtual machines or a certain number of virtual desktops or those environments, I know what increment I want to buy that in, I know the base configurations, and, and that's an underlying piece um, because when I go to cloud and or if I go to software defined data center or anything, there still needs to be hardware that it all lives on. I still need, you know, spindles and, you know, <laughs> you know, nodes and compute and, and everything else. So how do I build those out? And I want something that's just really easy, works, uh, and, and, and can scale. And that's one of the things that converged infrastructure can bring. So where are we in the marketplace? I mean, I, I definitely have to give Cisco props. I mean, they've done very, very well in the market. I underestimated them when they entered the market. I was extremely skeptical that they'd be able to succeed in an adjacency like servers. And looking back, the success is because they were very focused. They changed the game and obviously have done very well. And they had a, a partner uh, in not just EMC. I mean, NetApp's done very well with FlexPod. And so, so they've, they've got a good strategy. Um, it's worked. Uh, can you give us an update on sort of the market? What are the what are the players looking like? Yeah, so so it was interesting, Dave. Well, we we had the cube at the Open Compute Summit uh, this week, and if you talk about one of the biggest threats to Cisco, um, mm -hmm. is what we call kind of the white box or bright box is kind of the new term. Is not just saying just go buy some generic, uh, but you know if. You know, what about if I buy from Dell or HP and they give you some hardware and I disaggregate the software? Um, so some of that disaggregation um, is a big threat to Cisco. Uh, it's interesting, you listen to John Chambers and he said, I'm not worried, I'm going to crush all of those white box guys. But it, it's, a, it's a, you know, 
For years, Cisco has been squeezing huge margins out of the network, and they got much better margins out of compute than anybody thought that they could. A, a lot of it because they marry some of the network pieces in there. So there are some big threats. You see, most of the big players in uh, out here are using more commodity components. You know, we talked to you know HP and Dell, uh, IBM uses a lot of open source components. Even EMC offers uh, you know uh, you know white box type of technologies with what they build with ECS with Viper. Um, you know, a lot of their components. They're, they're going to more off-the-shelf componentry, and, and Cisco builds their own stuff. Uh, so, you know, there, there is a threat that uh, if, you know, I can deliver a platform at a lower price and I can get software built on top of it to really build more of a kind of a software ecosystem, which is how most of the market is, but it's not how infrastructure typically is today, th there's a huge threat to Cisco. Um, and, you know, while they've been, they've been riding UCS and they're doing great with it, at the macro trend, you know, I, I think there's some huge threats. Well, that's interesting. You know, open source even, fi even finds its way into hardware yeah. with, with OCP, and I would imagine companies like Cumulus and others um, would be sort of an interesting um, wild card, I should say, in that space. But what's the market look like? I mean, do you have a sense as to the, to the, to the size of the business? Who's got the biggest shares? I mean, even in a rough, Rough yeah, sense. So sure, from a compute standpoint? Yes. Yeah, so uh, it was it actually, uh, SimpliVity in their announcement said that it's basically, storage and compute are both a little over fi like 52 to 54 billion dollars So it's 100 each. billion. Yeah, it's 100 billion right. just taking the compute and the storage, yeah. um, and the convert space is you know looking to attack a big piece of that. Well, and you throw in, um, so you said the compute and the storage, throw in the networking. Yeah. You know, it's another piece, throw in the software. It's, uh, I, I mean, at one point I had it at a 400 billion, but okay, so it's huge. Yeah, and, and just, just a quick note on the, on the network piece, because really core networking is mostly orthogonal to this. You know, I don't build my whole network that right. I run all the internet and all my nodes off of. It's, there's top of rack switching and that embedded stuff is in the convergence, but I don't get all the networks. So, yeah, it's, so it's who's doing well there? I mean, obviously VC, what's their share, do you know, of, of converge? Well, if I see, you know, if VCE is at about two billion, and it's a little over six billion. It's they so are they you know number one in uh, you know Gartner breaks it up into two or three different segments, and they might have about half of the segment that they play in. And they're about you know more than a quarter, maybe Which a is third that high of end the overall v yeah block target market, okay. as opposed to the reference architectures. Another one, and then uh, Gartner actually segments the uh, you know application specific solutions like what Oracle does and some of IBM's uh, solutions as as a third piece. Um, so you know all those markets are, are growing. Convergence is really uh, you know, the, the, the rising tide that's raising, uh, you know, a lot of these pieces. So VCE seems the strategy is to, to expand horizontally with more choice, um, go up the stack, maybe over time, um, more, more management, you know, uh, uh, more cloud-like capabilities, probably not going into the application unless, I mean, they're not Oracle, so they're not going to start, you know, layering databases, but may maybe they could, you know, create affinity with, with databases. Um, so what do you see there, that, that sort of horizontal versus vertical play? Yeah, uh, and it, uh, I'll bring a, a note that VCE told us. It said in the early days, it was really about saving money and simplifying things. They, they, they love our terminology, Dave, which is to get rid of that undifferentiated heavy lifting. And the transformation that they've started to see over the last kind of six to 12 months is customers are looking to build this platform and get faster and do cloud speed. I'm, I'm sure it's something you heard uh, from the whole EMC Federation is that agility and speed is something that they're driving, especially with Pivotal. So um, in, in some ways, you know, they, they are moving up the stack, but they're not trying to make, um, you know, specific you know environments for applications they want a general purpose uh, you know pool of resources where I can understand the specific workloads and, and, and go after them um, so if I juxtapose that to Oracle Oracle is, is basically I call it appliance creep they're building highly optimized appliances for virtually every workload you can imagine whether it's database or analytics or you name it they've, they've got you know an appliance for it and so um, VCE's strategy is much, much different. They're talking about a horizontal infrastructure that can support not just Oracle applications, but applications across the portfolio. Now Oracle might say, well, we can support other applications too, but they really don't want to. Yeah. Oracle doesn't want to support Microsoft applications, right? They want to support Oracle applications. Right. Uh, I would think that 
VCE is application that wants to be application agnostic, right? Is that the strategy? Yeah, absolutely. Application agnostic. Um, in some ways, they're even going to be, you know, virtualization agnostic. We said it's VMware today, um, but that you can do physical environments on parts of the vBlock. You can use other virtualization environments. Um, it, the interesting thing, Dave, when we talk to the storage companies is, right, how are they doing with those new applications? You mentioned Hadoop before. Today, convergence has not been a good fit. Even hyperconvergence hasn't been a good fit for Hadoop because just the balance isn't quite right. It's usually not the same buyer. Most of the hyperconvergent solutions are built for virtualization. And while yeah. VMware is working hard to virtualize Hadoop, that's that's not where most people are with that type well, of Well, and I see this as, the as, modern as, apps. as VCE and Praveen, you know, expanding their, their, their total available market. I mean, if they can start getting into new forms of virtualization, um, uh, maybe even, you know, other choice around uh, s servers and network, not choice around storage, that's not going <laughs> to happen, is it? <laughs> no, no. It's, it's, Any, it's, it's anything not. you want, as long as it's EMC storage. I mean, yeah, that's kind e of the even new though, well, model, right? you know, federation. I mean, you know, if, if vSAN makes sense, you know, that's a little bit different. It's uh, you know, the role. It's interesting to see well, EMC, EMC. How much of it is yeah, hardware, yeah. and how much of it are software solutions? That, oh, that vSAN that looks real. I mean, that's that's getting you know traction, and it's just it's only going to go up from here. All right, Stu, uh, we're out of time. We're going to have to leave it there. Final thought on uh, on the announcement and the, the market, the directions, you know, customer thoughts. What, what do you think? Yeah, uh, so, you know, the, the thing that I keep coming back to is when I talk to VCE customers, it's, you know, Storage goes away as a problem, and as a matter of fact, most of my infrastructure uh, can become invisible, and, and that's great because it, it need to move to that different model. When we talk to the hyperscale guys, you know, they don't have infrastructure teams; they focus on their application, they focus on their business value, and that's something that I know we've been preaching at Wikibon for years. So, how do I make it simpler? How do I make that infrastructure go away? Um, and while VBlock you know, takes pieces from some of these big, you know, traditional companies, uh, they deliver an experience in a different way, uh, and it, it's really more about the people and processes, often than it is the technology, so it, 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 it's, it's great to see this, this process and this solution, uh, you know, driving some change back to these parent companies. All right, thank you, Stu. Check out, uh, check out Stu's work at uh, wikibon.org and also premium.wikibon.com, new website that we have. You can uh, text him or, <laughs> Tweet him at, he's at Stu. If you got any questions on the announcement, I'm at D. Vellante. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is theCUBE. We'll see you next time.